there's always people that will welcome you. There's usually a hug from one of them. Um, yeah, it's just a great, great place to, to find friends. Yeah, we've all been, everybody's, everybody's come from a different spot and we've all found something in common that we can do together. There's a, uh, there's a good feeling once, uh, once you're done. It's not a big, huge commitment out of my life. Uh, it's a couple hours a week at the max. And, uh, and uh, you feel good at the end because you've, uh, you've helped some seniors and they need help today. Hey everyone, this is Annie from the Kortha Art Gallery. I'm going to be showing you how to make a paddle boat. This project will use the power of physics in order to have our boat actually be able to move on its own. You will need cardstock, cardboard, or foam, any of them work, and we're going to be using the scissors to cut it out. A plastic container, I'm using a small Tupperware container. Make sure to make it a bit smaller so that it will be easier to set everything up. Three elastics. Two big ones and one small one. The small one, make sure it's stretchy because it'll be easier to wind up. And two pencils or popsicle sticks, either of them work. And remember, we also need a body of water for our boat to go in. First, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take one of your big rubber bands and tie it around the boat. I double looped it here just to make it a bit tighter. As you can see, I'm struggling to get it on because it's so tight. And then you're going to want to take your pencils or your popsicle sticks and you're going to want to thread them on both sides. And make sure the end is sticking out because the end is where we're going to attach our small elastic later. There. And we're going to be doing that one more time. Now I'm taking my second elastic and we're going to be tying it um, closer to the top this time. And this is just for balance because when we stick on our paddle part of the paddle boat, it'll be a lot heavier on the end. And I'm just going to say it again, remember to keep the top shorter and keep a lot of space on the bottom. So now you're going to want to look at that space and try to measure how tall it is because we're going to be cutting out whatever shape you want, a square or a circle. As you can see, I've lined it up so that it's tall enough. And you're going to want to trace out a shape. You'll want two of them. As I'm doing with my pencil, I made a square here and I'm just using a ruler just to make sure that it's very even. And you want to make sure the squares are about the same length because if they're not, then your boat is going to go in circles instead of going in a straight line. I mean, if you want circles, then go ahead and make it uneven though. <laughs> We're just going to cut out our shapes. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to measure and draw a line from the center of your shape to the outside, just halfway and you're going to want to cut. Remember, only cut halfway. And it should be almost exactly half, so I recommend getting a ruler. And the reason why we made those half cuts is because now your pieces should slot together. 
See, it takes a little bit of, you know, jigging it around and stuff until it works, but you want them to slot together very evenly. And if it doesn't work out too well, you might want to make a little bit of a wider cut. See, and now I have sort of a fan looking shape. And now we're going to want to take our small elastic and just stick it onto the end here and get that little fan shape we made and sort of attach it, only attach half of it, if you see what I'm doing here. Yeah, as you can see, I've attached just half of it on top and half on the bottom. So now we can wind it up. And just like that, we have our paddle boat, basically. And I'm winding it up backwards because once we release it, it'll go push the boat forward. If you don't believe that it works, here's a little video of it. And if it doesn't go too fast, I recommend winding it up a lot more. So now that our paddle boat is made, let's ask ourselves, how does it move on its own? Well, this all has to do with energy, which you might know as something you get from eating a lot of sugar. But did you know that it's also stored in objects as well? That's right, when we wind up the paddle boat, the energy our hand uses to do that is then given to the boat. So now the boat has what's called potential energy, which in easy terms is stored energy, which makes sense because we know the elastic wants to unravel. And once we let go, that potential energy changes into kinetic energy, which means energy that's happening through motion, which is how our boat ends up moving across the water. Kids and parents, if you did this experiment, then take a quick picture of it, email it to this email address, along with the child's name, age, and title of the video you watched, and we will post it on the Kortha Art Gallery website and social media so that you can see your own projects featured online. So we're at the Legion today in Omimi. This is one of our meetings. We've come together to wrap Christmas boxes to take it to Women's Resources for their ELF program. So the shoebox program is such a nice way of giving back. We made a decision to make shoeboxes for teens. A lot of times Women's Resources get things for the women not for the, and for the little ones, but not the teenagers. So we'll be here probably for a couple of hours, wrapping the boxes and then filling them with things that we've been able to purchase or donate to give away at Christmas. My name's Suzanne Whiteside, and I'm the current president of the Omimi Swan. The Swan started three years ago by four women, Jill Cockrell, Joyce Van Brock, Faye Spence, and Sue Collins. We are currently 15 members, all volunteering for the betterment of our community. The Mimi Legion approached the Swans and offered their kitchen as an opportunity to raise funds by catering different events. The joint partnership has worked amazing, as the Swans have catered anniversary parties, celebrations of life, birthday parties, and Legion dances. In our first year, we raised $8,000. Last year, we raised 15400 to give back to our community. I believe strongly in the great work that we are doing. The joy and the pleasure of working with this incredible team warms my heart every time we get together. The Omimi Food Bank, Special Olympics, local schools, the children's reading program at the library, Omimi Blooms, Women's Resources, and the Omimi Legion are just some of the not-for-profit organizations that have benefited from our donations. We completed 15,400 last year and we're looking forward to hopefully doing even more this year. So just recently we had a um, festival day on October the 28th and kind of like a Halloween party and a lot of the not-for-profit groups in Omimi got together at the Legion here and did a bunch of fun things for the kids. So we had over 50 kids come in in costume. Um, we did a little pumpkin toss where we decorated tied boxes with um, pumpkin face and we had little balls that they had to drop it in um, or throw it in and then we had lollipops that they took home as their prize. So such a joyful day to hear all the kids' voices in here and the excitement of the 
costumes and just the spirit of Halloween was wonderful. I was excited about the swans and then excited to hear about other groups that are working uh, the food bank, the Omimi Blooms with the beautification of the town, the Legion, trying to create events to bring the community together. Um, the Lions, always ongoing, doing events for, again, the town and for the, the betterment of our community. And now it seems there's a committee that has joined together to do different events together. So the Fall Festival was one that we did. So the Lions were there, the Blooms were there, uh, the Legion was there. Um, it was nice to have all these groups in one room together working for the betterment of everyone. And it'll happen again in December. I don't know where to begin. The Swans are absolutely amazing. They're an uh, incredible group of women, um, different ages, different backgrounds, and we've come together simply for the love of creating something and giving back to our community. So when we're catering, we're making that food with love and joining in with the celebrations that are happening in Omimi and raising money that we can give back for the betterment of the community. It is so rewarding to be part of this group between what we do and the friendships that we've been developing. I don't think I've laughed harder than I have the last two years in the kitchen. Lots of joking around, um, incredible strong female bonding in the kitchen is amazing. I'm so proud of them and it is very rewarding. We go home tired, but happy. It's really special to be making a big difference. I came, I'm fairly new to Omimi. My husband and I, we got married in the house that we live in. And, um, and Omimi's just been very welcoming to us as outside. Sometimes it's hard to find a place where you fit, but we've made lots of friends and we've really felt welcome. And it's nice to give back to the community that makes you feel so welcome. Because there's not as many people that are as fortunate as us. Yeah, you walk in the door, um, there's always cookies and coffee. There's always people that will welcome you. There's usually a hug from one of them. Um, yeah, it's just a great great place to, to find friends. Yeah, we've all been, everybody's Everybody's come from a different spot and we've all found something in common that we can do together. My mom was in a nursing home for four years. My mom, when she came here from Holland, she swore that she was never gonna knit again because she was one of the eldest. So she was knitting socks, but she did take up crocheting. And when she was in the nursing home, she always kept her hands busy and she made at least 10 bags of squares because she liked to make the squares but she didn't like to put them together so I asked the swans last year if they would help me sew them together last year we put together 33 blankets and I did all the edges and then we donated them to women's resources this year I still had more squares from my mother so I think we have over 10. So this is four of them. So Doris, Darlene, Suzanne, and myself have all worked on them. And then last year, all of the swans contributed to some of the sewing. Some of them don't sew very much, but they did put needle to thread and put them together. We hope to have them ready in two weeks when our boxes are done and then all of it will be gone to, uh, to the women's resources. So with the craft sales, we have, um, I pulled together probably three months ahead of time. I, I put out the call to vendors and then we promote it to radio stations and newspapers. We have somewhere between two to three prizes in our raffles. The Swans put a lunch on, so we have everything covered, and then we raise close to $1,000. With that $1,000, it goes out into the community. At the end of the year, the Swans all get together and have a say where the funds that we have raised will go. We're only three years old, but 
there are more people that know about what we're doing and it's nice that everybody has a say in where the funds everybody in our organization has a say of where the funds go because we're so new I'm hoping that that is always the case that people can bring things that they've heard or you know people that different organizations different things where people need want something that we can help them Um, first of all, I didn't know what the swans were to start off with, so I did some background research on swans. And it's originally from Britain, and uh, the the logo stands for service we uh, assist, nurture, and support. But the actual meaning is service uh, with a never-ending smile. So um, I kind of take that as my own personal logo and uh, use that hopefully. It's been great. We've had lots of events. We're very privileged to work out of the, the Legion here um, in the fact that we can service uh, a great number of groups and a great number of people. Right now, everything we make is donated back to the community. Last year, we were able to donate uh, over $15,000 to various uh, organizations, all money made by um, 15 or 16 swans. And I should tell you that the donations that we make into the community, each lady in our group decides where some of the money will go. So it's not just the, the board um, deciding we're going to give X amount of dollars to this group and X to this group. It's a contribution of all the ladies deciding where it goes. Uh, when we go to the Laugh and Learn this weekend, um, their, their goal is to um, raise funds for um, the WISH Foundation. So we will be contributing towards that as well. So that's, that, that's the, the best part is the contributions and the thank you letters you get back. That's what makes it for sure. Are you interested in becoming a member? Curious to find out more? We're on Facebook and our email is omimiswans at gmail.com. We meet on the second and the fourth Wednesday of the month at the Legion from 1 until 3. Come join us. I'm Jordan Prosper. I'm the Director of Community Support Services with Community Care City Port Lakes. And I'm Carrie Daly and I'm the Program Manager for Home Support Services in the Adult Day Program. And we're thrilled to uh, talk about our Meals on Wheels program. So although we have a number of programs with Community Care City Port Lakes that help older adults stay safe in their homes, uh, we're really proud of our Meals on Wheels program specifically. We have two distinct programs, one which offers frozen food delivered to individuals' homes and a hot meal program which helps support um, older adults in their home stay safe as well and delivered to their home and those are prepared by kitchen staff. So we modernized the Meals on Wheels uh, frozen order specifically. A year ago you were only able to call and place your order but now we've launched a website about a year ago and we've delivered over a thousand meals to clients home via the online website. So we're trying our best to increase access across the city of Port Lakes to healthy foods. And both programs are so dependent on volunteers to make to make it all work and we're always looking for volunteers to join our team. It's a, a small time commitment but makes such an impact and a difference in the lives of seniors uh, and those with challenges that need some help with meal preparation. And today we have with us Yvonne Wilshire, one of our coordinators at Community Care who helps organize the um, frozen meal deliveries to our clients in the community. And after that, we're going to show you how it is uh, from start to finish of how to cook our meals in our kitchens. We have one in Lindsay and we have one in Fenland, but we're going to give you the luxury of seeing what it's like firsthand to see how meals are prepared on the hot side in our Lindsay kitchen.
I'm Yvonne Welcher, Home Support Service Coordinator for Community Care. So we have a new system that is for our online food orders. Uh, before the clients would call in to home support and order their food through the clientele. And now they can do it online. Um, you can order anywhere in the city of Kortha Lakes. It's very helpful for those people that are not able to cook for themselves any longer or don't have the passion to cook. The meals are nutritious. They have all their daily intake that they need from these meals. And it's just a great way for people to get their nourishment. My name is Terry Wentworth and I'm the Food Services Supervisor for Community Care, City of Kortha Lakes. Uh, we run our Meals on Wheels hot food program out of this Lindsay kitchen as well as the kitchen in the north. Um, my, what I am doing this morning is I'm assisting Jane, who is our food services coordinator for this kitchen. Um, all of our foods are uh, date stamped and labeled so that when the client receives the meal, they know the date that the meal was packaged on. They know that it's safe. Uh, we have different labeling systems for different foods so they know if the food is hot or cold and they know what they're getting and when they're getting it. Today is a chicken stew, which is also our chicken pot pie filling. So they love that, that's sort of a comfort food for our seniors. We did shepherd's pie yesterday, which is another favorite. But one of my personal favorites is our butter chicken. We do butter chicken here. Uh, we do a very diverse menu and I like to change things all the time because I know I don't want to eat the same thing every day and I don't think our seniors want to eat the same thing every day. So we, we get to have a little bit of fun and we get to change things up, so it's nice. I've been with Community Care for 15 years, but in my current capacity for the last eight years um, as the supervisor. So I oversee the program, both kitchens, and I think the impact that we have here is phenomenal. We have a very aged society in our area and I think what we do serves such great purpose. It helps people to be able to stay in their homes. It gives them a nutritious meal. We have a wellness check involved with this when the drivers show up. And it's a little bit of a friendly visit too. Some of our folks don't see anybody else through the day except for the people who show up with their meals. So I, I have been doing this a long time and I feel wholeheartedly that this is uh, just something that is a great need and feels a great purpose in our community. We rely heavily on volunteers here at Community Care. There's one staff person in each kitchen um, and without the volunteers we can't do what we do. It's just it's just not based not with the price that we are able to uh, charge our clients for the food service. We the food is prepared daily. It goes out hot and fresh every day. It's delivered between 12 and 2 the hot meal. Um, we one of the things I feel strongly about as the supervisor of the program is we want to make sure our people have enough food. So we're generous with our portions. Yeah. A lot of our seniors make two meals out of this. So they may have their soup and their roll at lunchtime and they'll have their main course and their dessert later. A lot of them switch it up and do it the opposite way depending on the way that they eat. Uh, but all the food goes out, it's prepared daily. We don't we don't have things sitting around or it's just everything goes out fresh and we're able to do that five days a week, which is fantastic. So Rock, um, tell us about uh, what your role here is in the Meals on Meals program at Community Care. Uh, I'm a uh, volunteer. I deliver uh, meals uh, once a week uh, on a weekly route every Tuesday. There's a good feeling once, uh, once you're done. It's not a big, huge commitment out of my life. Uh, it's a couple hours a week at the max. And, uh, and uh, you feel good at the end because you've, uh, you've helped some seniors and they need help today. Yeah, and so it's more than a meal. It's a social component to the, to the program, which is invaluable for the clients and for their caregivers. They know that uh, on a set schedule that someone's checking in with their loved one and uh, that if they're not there, that we're going to you know, certainly do our best to locate them and make sure that they're safe and well. We're always looking for volunteers and we were thrilled when Rock joined our team. Um, it's kind of a family affair, it encouraged uh, from family that, to get involved and I, I would it safe to say that you um, are glad that you did get involved with oh, Meals? Oh absolutely, uh, I mean I'd been thinking about it for a while. My, uh, my oldest daughter who uh, as part of her social studies is, uh, was volunteering as well and they'd be coming home and they'd be uh, a smile on their face and they'd be happy so uh, I sort of got thinking that maybe I wanted a little bit of that uh, joy and uh, I was enjoying it. Going strong since. Absolutely.
As you can see, there's a fair uh, amount of organization behind the scenes to get these meals out to clients. So um, Brock is getting ready to go out to do a Meals on Wheels delivery, so we'll get him his Meals on Wheels delivery bag. Time is temperature. We want to get these meals hot and ready to the client's door so when they arrive, they're ready to eat. You can join our team of volunteers at Community Care. We're always looking for volunteers to support our program. Triculated the Meals on Meals, many hands make light work. So uh, to find out how to uh, volunteer, you can go to our website and apply online. It's a straight and easy process. So hope that you'll uh, join our team of volunteers like Rock did. Highly recommend it.